Welcome, Viking warriors, to Valheim. The Mistlands can be a dangerous place. Exploring this area requires you to travel through dense fog over a treacherous landscape while keeping an eye out for giant insects. At the end of it, though, we face the sixth and currently final boss of Valheim, the Queen. Today, I've got five ways you can use to defeat her. How this boss fight starts is a little different from the others. First, you're going to have to find nine Sealbreaker fragments scattered throughout the different Mistland dungeons. Using the new Galder table, you combine those to craft a Sealbreaker. Then, you use that at the entrance to the infested citadel. You can use the Sealbreaker as soon as you make it. The fight doesn't start until after you go inside. In fact, the Queen is the first boss fought in an instance dungeon. Unfortunately, this reduces the amount of shenanigans we can do with the boss. We can't make crafting benches or other things like that inside of a dungeon. Instead though, we can take advantage of the fact that the entrance to this place could make a pretty good base. If this is your first encounter with the Queen, then there's a good chance you'll die a few times. Let's build a few things right outside this door to help with that. A bed for quick respawning, a black forge, a galder table, and any other crafting stations that will allow us to quickly repair. We'll also cover this area so that we can give ourselves a decent resting bonus before going in. I may have gone a little excessive with this, but it is a building game after all. Some good comfort means our little respawn area will give a nice long rested buff. Technically you don't have to build any of this. All you need is a portal back to base, but this will reduce the amount of loading screens you have to go through. Now, let's go over some items and equipment you should also make. One item that's absolutely necessary before going in is the new Feather Cape. This cape's special power is the Feather Fall ability. When you leap off a cliff, you'll glide down safely, allowing you to never suffer from falling damage again. The Queen's Lair itself is pretty tall, and you can take advantage of that height if you're wearing that cape. Some other useful items that will help with this encounter are Poison Resistance Meads, and materials to build wisp torches. I recommend bringing materials for at least 20 to 40 of them. Now that everything's set up, let's give you a tour of the Queen's Lair. The entrance is a relatively safe place. If things are looking tough, you can always retreat back here for a little breather. On the first and second floors near the entrance are several Seeker Brood Eggs. If you don't want these joining mid-fight, you should clear them out now before the Queen notices you. Speaking of which, where is the queen? This dungeon has four floors to it. In my case, she's roaming around near the top, but for some folks, she might actually be waiting at the entrance for you. Since I still have some time, I'm going to start placing some wisp torches in advance. You want to scatter them around to cover as much of the area as possible, preferably near the walls or in the corners. You don't want them to break during combat, and they most likely will break a lot when the action starts. It's time for method number one, pure melee. For this method, I recommend using the Mistwalker Sword, a Carapace Shield or Carapace Buckler, and either the Demolisher or the Himen Affle. One of the key points about this encounter is that there is going to be a lot of adds. You're going to get easily overwhelmed if you're not using something with an area of effect to take out the Seekers and Seeker Brutes. The Queen has several abilities. She starts with a few different melee attacks that you can block, parry, or dodge. If she howls, this is when the Seekers spawn out of the nests scattered throughout the dungeon. Keep an eye out, because soon two Seekers are going to attack you. Like I mentioned before, there are several floors to this dungeon. If you want to quickly separate yourself from the Queen, Jump off the ledge and float down to the bottom. From here, you can safely take care of any ads if this starts to be overwhelming. While blocking and parrying her attacks work, the knockback from those attacks is so powerful that it's better to use the dodge roll ability as much as possible so you can stay in melee range. Just keep in mind, you only have enough time for two swings before her next attack. 
don't be greedy. If, however, she uses her Howl ability, you'll have more time to get more swings in. Just don't use up all of your stamina. At random times, she will also burrow and move to different parts of the dungeon. This can be useful when you want to quickly deal with any seekers, but it can also be annoying if you set yourself up and are trying to do more damage, and now you have to go and find her in the fog again. This is pretty much how the fight works until she reaches about 75% health. Once you get her health down a bit, she'll gain a new ability. If you're at a certain range away from the queen, she'll gain a spew attack. The ground where the spew hits will spawn several seeker broodlings. This is when you take out your demolisher and kill them all at once. The spew attack also deals a mix of physical and poison damage. If you try blocking it though, it will absolutely destroy your stamina. If you need to avoid it, try dodge rolling away from it instead. Another little tip you can try is that you can avoid her ground stab attack by walking backwards. It has a very short range, but if you can dodge it completely, it'll help a lot with stamina regeneration. You'll also see at times that I only have my sword equipped. It takes time to also equip the shield, but that doesn't mean you can't block or parry if you only have your weapon equipped. The spew attack also won't hit you if you're in melee range. When you see it coming, you should pull out your demolisher to get rid of the broodlings as quickly as possible. It's also around this time she'll gain another melee attack. If there's a long windup to her attack, she's about to do a long range bite. This move can hit harder, but you can still block, parry, or dodge it once you get the timing down. It's also at this point, things might get a little more difficult. If you find yourself getting overwhelmed, use Bone Mass's Forsaken Power. Almost every attack in this fight is physical, so it'll be very helpful at this point. One other thing I tend to do when I'm running low on stamina is I will block an attack on purpose. The knockback gives me some range, allowing me to catch my breath. Just keep in mind, the spew attack never happens if you're in melee range. If you don't want to deal with the broodlings, stay close to the queen at all times. Once her health reaches about 60%, she'll gain one more attack. 
You may not have seen it that clearly just now, but she can now quickly charge at you and use a slash attack. This is an attack that can catch you off guard, because up until this point, you were relatively safe when at range. Now she can close the distance on you and get in melee range whenever she wants. She can also sometimes use this to jump off stairs and attack you from above. That's basically the whole fight. Now that you know all of her abilities, it's just a matter of managing every one of those attacks to the best of your ability until you can kill her. I've been using the Demolisher on the ads for a while now, but let me speak briefly about the Hidden Apple. It's a new 8 gear weapon, and its secondary attack has an area of effect like the hammer. However, they both have their trade-offs. The Demolisher has a larger and more effective and consistent area of effect, but it's a very slow weapon which can leave you open to attacks. The Hidden Apple has a smaller area of effect which requires you to get in the middle of the action, but it's a faster weapon which means you'll have more control for moving around and dodging attacks. Use the one that matches your playstyle the most. This fight can also last quite a long time. Make sure to pay attention to all of your buffs. This includes poison resistance, fingering stamina if you're using it, how long you have left with your food buffs, and your weapon durability as well. If you notice, my sword's durability is smaller than the boss's health. This is one of the reasons why I built crafting stations right outside of the dungeon entrance.
Not only can I go outside for a quick break, but I can repair my weapons so they won't break mid-combat. As a tip, if you're refreshing your rested buff, do not sleep on the bed. The queen, like all bosses, has a small amount of passive regeneration. If you sleep, she'll gain a lot more health back. When you come back into the dungeon, likely the queen and the seekers will have destroyed a lot of your wisp torches. You'll have to pick up their pieces and put them back together again while you look for the queen, unless she finds you first. Now that we're rested, rebuffed, and everything's fixed, let's watch the rest of the fight.
On defeat, the Queen drops some placeholder items for the next content update called Queen Drops. We won't know what they're for until likely the Ashlands gets released. She also drops her trophy, which you can hang at the Sacrificial Stones. For method number two, we're going to use the new magic system that got introduced with the Mistlands update. To get started, you'll need to eat the right foods that give ether, and ideally craft a full set of ether weave armor. Unlike with the melee build, where you normally just stick to one or two weapons, you want to equip every magic weapon as a spellcaster. They're basically like skill slots. You have the Staff of Embers and Frost for fire and ice magic, the Staff of Protection, which gives you a shield that can block a lot of damage, and the Dead Razor, which can summon up to two skeletons to fight by your side. One thing that can help a lot is to not completely ignore melee weapons. Every spell you cast may take a lot of ether and attention, and if you need to kill just a single broodling, it's a lot easier to just smack it with a quick swing of a sword. If you want to fight the queen again, you need to go to the very top of the infested citadel where you find the Hive Seat. If you offer three Seeker Soldier trophies, she will spawn again. However, before we start, we're going to summon two skeletons and give our whole party protection. The skeletons are purely to distract the queen in the beginning, and may not last very long. You can use them later during the fight, but they're very costly just to have a distraction. Between the Staff of Embers and Staff of Frost, I only use the Staff of Frost when there are no adds and the Queen is distracted by my skeletons. In terms of damage, it's more effective than the Staff of Embers, but requires you to focus while you're attacking and it's not very accurate at long range. Also, don't be afraid to use your Aether Meads. The extra regeneration can give you some really big damage boosts during the fight. For all other times, I use the Staff of Embers to hit her and the Seekers. The strategy for using magic is to basically keep running and avoiding the Queen while you lob fireballs at her. If there are any Seekers, use fireballs to deal with them quickly, or use your sword if there's just one of them or they're low on health. Remember, you're now wearing cloth armor and only have a bubble for protection. Don't try to do anything that can get you easily killed. As a mage, you barely use any stamina. So this time, it's almost entirely reserved for running away. If you level up your elemental magic skill, Seekers can usually be killed by two well-placed fireballs. Even if they don't immediately die, the burning will usually finish them off if their health is low enough. If the queen spews some Seeker Broodlings, you can take them all out with a fireball, so long as your aim is good. The main thing you need to watch out for is that your protection bubble is always active. Even with a staff, you can still block attacks, but if you don't have your bubble and get caught off guard, you can die in a single hit if you're not careful. Even at this point, you can see me running around while I forget to refresh it. Despite being a spellcaster, you should still learn to dodge like I did with the melee strategy. As a glass cannon, now you want to use dodge rolls against her attacks more than ever.
At this point, there's not much else to talk about that I haven't already said with the previous method. Just keep your distance, be effective with your ether usage, watch your buffs, and do your best.
Once again, I decided to take a little break to quickly refresh my food buffs. But I noticed I got a little visitor this time. I don't know how it stuck through the door, but it busted all of my chests. I didn't notice this until after, but I ate a stamina food instead of an ether food. Thankfully, we're close enough to the end anyways, so it doesn't really matter a whole lot. Remember to always re-enter the dungeon with your protection buff active. If a seeker is waiting for you at the entrance, there's a chance you might immediately get killed. And that's how you kill her with magic. For method number three, we're actually going to go with a hybrid approach. We're going to eat three foods to get all three stats. Mist Share Supreme, Seeker Aspic, and Mushroom Omelets. Like with our melee strategy, we have the Mist Walker and Carapace Shield, but we'll be using the Staff of Embers for the adds, and the Staff of Protection for some extra defense. This time, I've also added a new item, Bile Bombs. While these can help deal more damage to the Queen, they're also great at dealing with Seekers and Broodlings. This time, we're going in with even more options to deal with all the situations we may find ourselves running into. You also have two choices. You can either buff your defenses with the Carapace Armor, or you can increase your Aether Regen with the Aether Weave Armor Set instead. Since I'm getting better at dodging, I'm going to go with the Aether Regeneration option instead though I'll have to keep in mind to use the protection spell often. When fighting with Bile Bombs, since they can be quite expensive to craft, you should only use them on the Queen if she's standing still, or on the adds if things are getting a little hectic. If you also are focusing on melee, 
and let your ether regenerate on its own, you'll always have enough to cast two fireballs in a row. Maybe a third if you let it regenerate a little bit after. My combo attack is usually one bile bomb, two fireballs, then I go in and melee. This combination can do some pretty decent damage. If you ever want to dump a lot of spellcasting damage, pop one of your ether beads. It'll give you plenty of mana to cast protection and a few fireballs. The nice part about having melee, magic, and bombs as weapons is that you can cycle between all of them depending on the stamina or ether you have available. If you're running low on stamina, use bombs and magic. Got a full stamina bar? Start swinging that sword. You should also start noticing that we're doing a lot more damage than our previous two methods. Not only are we killing the adds and the queen faster, but we're splitting most of the damage between multiple weapons. We won't need to run outside to repair anymore.
This time, in just under 10 minutes, the queen is dead. I'm calling method number four the bone mass rush method. You may ask yourself, wait a minute, haven't you been using bone mass this entire time? Well, this time, it's all about hitting the queen as hard and as fast as possible and letting the bone mass buff soak up all, or at least most, of the damage. For this, I recommend using our exact same hybrid build again. We're eating all the foods for all three stats, but because we're going to be tanking hits, the carapace armor is mandatory. For weapons, you can either use the Mistwalker and Carapace Shield, or you can use the Krom Two-Handed Sword. We also have our Staff of Embers, but now we added Ooze Bombs in addition to Bile Bombs to try to squeeze out even more damage here. The main intent with this strategy is we're going to try to blitz her down within 5 minutes, which is about how long the Bone Mass power lasts. I'm also only going to be using the Protection Staff once at the start. It requires health in order to cast, something we don't want to be losing mid-fight. With everything set, let's rush this. In order for this strategy to work, we need the queen to corner us against the wall. If we are against the wall, the knockback won't be a big deal and we can keep swinging our sword. To get cornered, you can either jump in between her and a wall, or wait for her in a corner until she uses her ground stab attack. It has a smaller range, so she has to move closer in order to use it. Don't forget, the point of this strategy is to exploit Bone Mass's superior Forsaken power, so don't forget to pop it when the fighting starts. It can be a little hectic with all the poison clouds and fireballs, but once again, you want to cycle through all of your weapons to deal as much damage as possible. If she moves or digs, get her into position again and repeat the cycle. While fighting on the stairs can make things tighter, the corners are a slightly slower but more reliable way to get stuck with her. If you look at the little red numbers that tell you how much damage I'm taking, it's in the range of 8 to 12. You also don't always have to take damage. Dodge or block whenever you feel you're more comfortable to do so. If you ever feel that your health is starting to get too low while doing this, just pop a healing meat and continue swinging. Aside from the corner, this staircase on the right hand side of the dungeon is another easy place to get stuck between her and the wall, so long as she doesn't use her charging attack. At any point, if you're taking too much damage and your healing meat is on cooldown, just take a break and start dodging. You get 2-3 to three chances for healing meats during this fight, 
So just wait for the next one to become available. Remember, even if you can't kill her within the five minutes, just switch to the hybrid method I talked about earlier. You don't need to get yourself killed while trying this. The worst case scenario should be that you dealt a ton of damage, she's probably on low health, and now you're using the hybrid method. Also, sorry about the weird camera angle, but that's going to happen when you're crammed into a corner with a giant boss. And just like that, whereas the first two methods took almost 20 minutes each, our Bone Mass Rush method got the kill in only four and a half minutes. By the way, something funny happened while I was testing this. If you get squeezed into the wall too much, the queen can actually knock you out of the dungeon instance. Oops. At least with the feather cape, you can safely land back down onto the planet. Lastly, for method number 5, we're going to cheat this and only use the Demolisher. At the entrance to the Infested Citadel is a small place where the Queen can't touch you. But weapons with an area of effect like the Demolisher can actually hit her through the wall. After aggroing the Queen, you're simply going to lead her back to the entrance and fight her from here. One important thing to note, nothing else should be built in this dungeon for this strategy to work effectively so don't build any wisp torches this time. Once you have her aggroed, simply get down to the ground floor and wait for her to come to you. Once she sees you down here, make your way to the entrance and start hammering away. If you see her health bar go down, then you know it's working. From the safety of the entrance, the hammer can hit her and she will do nothing. And as long as there's no other structures built, she shouldn't summon any other adds or get distracted either. It's that time again, let's speed this part up. Of course, this hammer won't last forever. If you didn't craft two of them, you're going to have to go out and repair it. When you come back in, grab her attention and start hammering again. Be careful though, with an interruption like leaving and re-entering the dungeon, she might spawn a seeker or two this time, so pay attention and be very careful. And after only 8 minutes, she's finally dead. Some folks believe that since this trivializes the fight too much, and it's very easy to reproduce, it will likely get patched out. You better do it while you can. And that concludes 5 different methods you can use to defeat the 6th and currently final boss in the Mistlands, the Queen. For this fight, it's mostly just a scale between melee and magic, so pick whichever works best for you. But as you saw, Mixing them together can make things a whole lot easier. Defeating the queen and hanging her head at the sacrificial stones will grant you a special power 
that increases ether regeneration by another 100% and increases your mining damage. I hope you enjoyed these guides. It was an interesting challenge to kill all these bosses in as many ways as I could find possible. It may be a while before the next boss in the Ashlands gets released, but when that happens, I hope there's plenty of ways to fight them. Until then, I'll see you next time.